What's up guys, Chris schwartz Edmondson here from schwartz Edmondson Web Design. In today's video, we're gonna look at how to create a header that starts at the bottom of the page and then becomes sticky as you scroll down the page. And we're gonna look at how to do this in Squarespace 7.1. So the inspiration for this effect comes from this Elu Parfum site that someone sent me and they were wondering how to do this effect where the header starts at the bottom and then as you scroll down, it's sticky. And one thing to note about this site is if we go to another page, like we'll just go to the Our Story page, uh, it doesn't do it on any other page other than the home page. And I think that's a good call. In terms of usability, like it's okay to mix it up on like the main landing page but I don't like that effect on every single page because it does kind of differ from the usual norm of what people are used to. And I don't think you should mess with that too much. So it can actually like inhibit people searching your site, even though it is a cool effect. So I think that's a good call to only have it on the homepage. So when we write this CSS, we're gonna only be applying it to our homepage as well. So the way that we're gonna be achieving this effect is by giving the header a position of sticky, and basically it says here, sticky positioning is a hybrid of relative and fixed positioning. The element is treated as relative positioned until it crosses a specified threshold, at which point it is treated as fixed position. And they give a demo here. So we can look at this gray bar here. It's content on the page, but as we get to the top of the page, it sticks. And you can see this second C bar here, this gray bar is doing the same thing. So it's taking up its position on the page as because it has a position of relative, but as soon as we, it gets to its specified position at the top, then it becomes fixed to the top. So that is kind of the basis behind this. And if you're wondering you know, how good sticky support is, because here it says better sticky support is on the horizon. Well, this was back in 2016. So now by 2021, we have like 96, 94% unprefixed coverage. So we're fine. Every major browser is covering it, except for a couple like really obscure ones. So we're totally good to use position sticky. Everyone pretty much is going to be able to see this effect. So the first thing that we have to do in Squarespace is we have to make the header go below this first section, because remember, we need the header to be positioned relative below the first section. And then only when it gets to the top, do we want it to then stick to the top. So the way that we're going to do that, the way that we're going to move the header below the first section on the page is by using some JavaScript. So I'll go to settings, advanced code injection. And the first thing that I want to do in the footer code injection is open up some script tags. So the first thing I want to do is add an event listener to the page that listens for all of the page content to be loaded, and then it'll run our function. And the reason we have to do that is because we'll be placing the code above our page contents in the page header code injection. So our code is actually gonna load before any elements on the page load. And so if we didn't add this event listener to wait for all the page content to be loaded before actually running the code, then nothing would happen because none of the elements on the page would be loaded at the time the code is firing. So inside of our function, I'm gonna store our header element as a variable called header and we're gonna get the header by its element ID. So if I right click and inspect the page, we can see that the header has an ID of header. So I'm gonna copy that into there. Next, I'm going to save the first section on the page as a variable called first section. So I'm gonna use document.query selector to get the first section on the page. Then we just wanna place our header after our first section on the page, and that's all of the code that we have to write. Whoops, I forgot a period. Now, if we reload our page and inspect, we can see that the header now actually has moved under the first section on the page in the HTML. We just can't tell right now because our header is set to position fixed, and so it's still fixed to the top of the page. But structurally, our JavaScript has worked, and we have made that change. So now we're ready to write the CSS to actually give it the position of sticky. So to make the header sticky, we can target the header by its ID of header and then open up some curly brackets and we'll give it a position of sticky. And then we also have to give it that threshold. So where do we want it to stick relative to the top of the window? And for that, we'll give it a top property of zero. So we want it to stick to the very top of the window. And so now we can see the header is at the bottom of the section because it has a position relative until it gets to the top of the window and then it sticks to the top. So that's awesome. So we, 
we basically have it like done just in those couple steps. But there's some more refinement that we need to do uh, because we do need to think further about this effect. So one thing that we need to do is we want to limit this first section's height to be 100% of the viewport height, but minus the height of the header. So to target this first section on the page, we can do page section first child, just like we did in the JavaScript. So that'll target the first section on the page. And then we want to give it a min height. And we'll give it a min height of, and we'll open up a calc function and we'll do 100 viewport height minus the height of the header. So for me, if I right click on the header and I want to go to the outermost container of the header. So we want that container that has the ID of header. And if we go all the way down, we can see the width and the height of that element here. And so my height of the header is 92, basically 93 pixels. So I'll do uh, 93 pixels. So 100 viewport height minus 93 pixels. And then I'll close that off. Now it's not gonna work because the, this CSS window uses the less preprocessor and it doesn't accept calc functions like this. Less unless you have to escape the calc function by doing a little curly and then opening quotation marks. Now we're gonna be moving this to the page header code injection eventually. Um, so this, we're gonna have to change this eventually is what I'm saying, but I want you guys to be able to see this here in the preview. So we also have to include an important tag on this because the section's min height is an inline style, we need to use an important tag to override uh, the default min height. Um, oh, excuse me, so it's not an inline style. There's just way more classes that are styling the minimum height on this element. Like there's one, two, three, four, there's like five classes and pseudo classes as well. Um, and we were just using one class and one you know, pseudo selector essentially. So our, our CSS was much less specific than Squarespace's. So we need that important tag to make sure that our styles override Squarespace's default styles. So now that I've added kind of all those workarounds, uh, we now see the header perfectly at the bottom of the window and that's perfect. But if you go down to the first section in, in the footer, because the first section in the footer is also a page section and it's also the first child in its container, it's also getting this styling. Um, so that's a problem that we need to fix. And the easiest way to do that is page sections are housed in an element with an ID of page uh, and footer sections are in their own container. So if we just add a main, we can target this uh, element by the main tag here. So if we write main and then page section, it's gonna limit the page section to just uh, page sections within that main element. So it'll exclude the footer and now we don't have that problem anymore. Okay, so this is a really good start. So let's go ahead and refresh and we'll see a couple other things happening. We see the header appear at the top of the window and it loads in and then our JavaScript applies to put it below and then it pops down below. So obviously that's a really ugly loading process. And what we can do is we can get rid of it um, we can hide the header until it follows the first section on the page. So what we can do is we can come up here to the header and we can give it a display none. But when the header follows the first section on the page, so we'll write main page section first child. And when the header directly follows that first section, we can then give it a display of block and bring it back. So when the header initially loads, it's gonna get a display of none. So it's actually, it's, it's not gonna load. It's gonna disappear from the page until the JavaScript moves the header directly after the first section on the page. And then it'll appear because we're telling it to appear in the CSS. So now if we re reload the frame, we don't get any ugly loading anymore. It just appears directly at the bottom of the page uh, as soon as the JavaScript moves it. So that's perfect. So one last thing that we have to think about is the mobile style. Um, and it just <laughs> it doesn't really work to have the header at the bottom of the page on mobile. Um, it just doesn't look good. Um, and 
Elu, if you shrink down their site all the way, they actually keep that menu on mobile, but I don't think it works very well on this site either, because if you're at the top of the browser and you open the menu, you, you think nothing's happening until you scroll down and realize that it's a drop down menu. So I disagree with that design choice a little bit, um, but on our site, like it just, it doesn't work at all. So we want to disregard this CSS from working on mobile. And the way that we can do that is we can limit this CSS to only apply above certain screen widths. So for us, we want it to only apply when the menu is not visible. So we can write at media screen and we'll write a min width media query. So this is only going to appear on devices bigger than 768 pixels. And now I'll open up some curly brackets and I'll delete that closing curly bracket and move it after all of this CSS. And now you can see the header jump back up to the top because this CSS is no longer applying on any screen smaller than 768 pixels. Because again, we're only applying this CSS at screen widths with a minimum width of 768 or higher. So if we go to desktop, perfect, it jumps down beautifully. If someone goes to the site on mobile, they're gonna get the normal navigation experience, which is exactly what we want. So um, now I just have to convert this to be ready to be put in the header code injection of the home page because again, we only want this to happen on the home page. We don't want this to happen on like the about page, for example. Just weird things can happen um, and, and we wanna avoid that. So what we can do is we can copy all of this CSS and I'm just gonna press Control X to cut it. And then I'll go to the pages panel and I'll navigate to the home page. And I'm gonna click the gear icon and click advanced. And then up here, I'm gonna write, open up some style tags and we're gonna paste our CSS between the style tags. Now, one thing we have to do is we had to change up the calc function to make it work in the site-wide CSS window, but we don't have to do those workarounds when we put it in the page header code injection. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of the little tilde and the quotation marks, and now uh, it'll run perfectly in the page header code injection. Okay, so the next thing that we have to do is we just have to move our code to the home page as well. So if I go to my code injection panel, I'll copy the code. And I'm gonna cut the code actually, because we don't want it in the footer anymore. And I'm gonna paste it in the header code injection between script tags. And there we go. So, uh, whoops, I already had script tags. <laughs> so I'm gonna delete those extra ones. So I'll hit save on that. And we should see it load up just perfectly on this one page. And if we were go to go to another page, we get our normal header experience there at the top, which is perfect. So by being thoughtful about how we were writing the code, we're able to keep the code pretty clean by just putting it in the page header code injection for the one page that we want the code on. We've handled the mobile view, making, it, making sure we have a normal mobile viewing experience. And then also for edit mode, the nice thing is the header overlay controls will still overlay our header even if they're not at the top of the page. So there's no interruption to our site editing experience. All right, I hope you found that helpful. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I do cool CSS and JavaScript tricks for Squarespace like this all the time. So that way you'll be notified when I come out with new videos. I've considered doing a full tutorial on that inspiration site that I got this effect from. So if you'd like to learn how to build that site in Squarespace, just leave a comment down below. I'm deciding whether to make it like a very low cost training or maybe even just a free course if enough people are interested. So if you are, let me know in the comments down below and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.